and you had mentioned uh, all the callbacks. So I want to get from from the actors what it felt like to go on. I had never been on eight callbacks for a project. Mm -hmm. So what did it feel like to you? How many have callbacks? Did you um, do? Yeah. Did you I don't know there was that many. No. I had I seven mean, callbacks. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because I would log. I, I was very diligent about logging all my stuff down. Oh, they really, and I remember the last them. callback going in there and saying, I'm not coming back, so you better decide <laughs> what you want. Yeah, I remember that. You remember that? Everybody was getting sick of it. I was yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think I had I that agree. many. I think I'm, maybe I had, you know, four. I think the more including, callbacks... Including your, you, your original, my initial, and my, then my and initial, four more. Yeah, I think so. And Well, for me, uh, I, I think the more I came back, the more confident I became because mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, like I just became to gel more between, you know, between me and the character well, what it, and almost sorry, become the character. What it is is that you, you had the part. He had the, oh, he looked oh. the part. Yeah, that, so you yeah, didn't need, you didn't thing. need all the callbacks. I see. You were difficult. Yeah, yeah. Yes, were difficult. because they didn't know where to put <laughs> I was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I was difficult as <laughs> shit. Yeah. No, but I remember, but I only had, wait, I remember because I only had, had, walking me outside and taking me down and saying, you could have been I don't know which one, because I read all of them, and he said, so what do you want to play? I said, but that's it's your job to tell me what to then play. He, he, I would right. sit. He had me right. sit in the chair, and he would. And I would go. I'm well, ready. He would you're, go. You're just not shut counting up. the ma the matching so, things. Mm -hmm. Are you counting that? The the at the end. Yeah, where everybody would line up. And I remember that. No, no, no I did lawn. that once. Yeah, I, I, I remember I know, on the I lawn know, on San Vicente. Yeah, yeah. I did that. I did <laughs> that once. Yeah. I did. I did that once. Yeah. Yeah. I this. I mean, this is what I remember. I I I read once, and because I remember when you called me. And then every time I got called back, I would go in, and Ramon would have me sit in the chair. And, and I was there with the script, and it was all new to me. I was kind of excited, you know? And then I would sit there a couple minutes, he'd go, oh, thank you for coming in, thank you. And I'm like, what well, did I didn't, didn't do anything? Like, and I came back a couple times, and then the last time I came in was when that whole bagel thing happened. Yeah, yeah. Tell us and, about uh, the and, bagel thing. Well, <laughs> okay. All right, this is what happened. I was down to $39 and like 59 cents in my bank account. I had, I literally just walked off the job because I told the guy I have a call back and I got to go to this. And he said, you can't go. It's a Saturday. We're doing brunch. And I went, I got to go. I quit. And I left. And I, uh, I got over to, to the casting and, um, and I walk in. It was early. It was really early. And I come in and Ramon is eating a bagel. You guys, <laughs> you know, and I come in and I sit down in the chair and I'm, you know, I got the script and I got my notes, you know, and I'm sitting there and, and like, I'm kind of oblivious. Like nobody's saying anything to me. And I looked at Ramon and I said, you have another one of those? He goes, what? Because he, st like I stopped and he goes, what? I said, a bagel. He goes, yeah, they're, they're, they're in the kitchen. They're, you know, so I, w I got up and I went in the kitchen and I sat on the sink and I toasted the bagel and I, and he came out, <laughs> came out and went, what the, are you doing? And, and I went, I'm eating a bagel. He was like, get in there. I go, you don't need me in there. You never need me in there. Like, I just sit in the chair. And I went, and oh my God, remember? We got into this fucking argument. I know. And we it got into this argument. Yes, shoot. we did. We into this argument. Tony was like, oh my God. How so, funny is that? You yeah. argued your yeah. way into yeah. the art. So I wanted to ask you, Victor, what was your experience um, getting cast? It was uh, interesting because there were so many callbacks but I had been doing I was uh, making a living doing commercials and they were several callbacks and I think after the fourth commercial callback you actually got paid so you were waiting to get called back maybe a seventh or an eighth time for Colgate or some you know for something some product just to get paid I think at that point it was it was twenty dollars so they kept calling me back I read for um, uh, Danny's role they um, I have to say, and, and there's no reflection on the casting mm -hmm. process, but uh, the uh, producer director, we had a couple of times I was sized up outside on San Vicente Boulevard when they would put you together, me with you, me with you, for some reason, me with Carla. You know, I'm sure you and I stood together. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, standing next to Lou, and I forgot who else, and they're shooting all these pictures. And they didn't really tell us, I mean, I had an idea why, but it just seemed like there was a bit of confusion as to how these pieces of the chessboard were going to all fit together. Mm -hmm. But it was fun. It was fun, exciting. It, for me, it was fast. Again, I was used to that type of, uh, you know, uh, audition process where you got something or you didn't. And uh, commercials is much more brutal. So uh, you got cast as, originally... Um, Chico. 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 And then I got 
brought in, I was told I was going to be uh, Jaime Jr. So that's pretty much how that was. And how did you get cast? Um, well, I had been doing uh, the auditioning, you know, and I had been, I actually met Ramon like two years prior, you know, so I had been hanging out with the guys, and I was a, pretty much an integral part of the whole process. When Victor came in and they, they told me he was going to do Chuco, they asked me to take him to East LA. So we were hanging out, you yeah. know, we were hanging out in East LA. A couple LA days, on, I don't remember, a weekend or something? At, at night, at you night. know, on some street corner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doing research? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing, research. doing research, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was surprised when uh, suddenly, he took me outside. They were they, they were rehearsing, mm -hmm. and he took me outside. And he said, "Okay, we gotta we gotta run these lines." And I'm like, "Why are we running lines?" He goes, "Cause you're gonna audition right now for that part." I go, "Well, we already got Victor." He goes, "No, no, you know, let's do this." Yeah. I'm like, "Okay." So I went in. You know, Ed, what happened was Eddie, Eddie came up to me. There was a talk, and they said they were having. We were trying to piece, like you were saying, piece things together. And I remember that you were you were pulling some cable, and I went up to the script, and I went, "Come on, we have to go outside." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I and I come outside, and I'm telling him, "You have to, you have to re do this line, do this line." And he's rehearsing the line, <laughs> and I tell him, "Dude, you gotta do it like you want to kill my mother." And I tell him, like, "You just gotta think that in the back of your head." And he's doing it and doing it, and then he came through. I mean, that's what it was. He, he read, he read. So yes, yeah, so we went we in, finger line we went back in, the, in, and uh, in the middle of your rehearsal. Yeah. I'm doing the lines, and then he's like, "All right," and then that was All it. All unknown to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it it seems it seems that <laughs> once once there was, there was this, once Eddie almost came in, it sort of became sort of like Eddie saying versus Ramon saying. Yeah, because remember that one scene right. that my remember you remember. Mm -hmm. and and my Ramon <laughs> wasn't that happy about what went down yeah. because you know yeah. it was not yeah. what he wanted. It the hardest thing is again you have. A high school group of kids mm -hmm. you have to know that it looks okay feels okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they look all good together that's a lot of the that feel. visually yeah. Yeah. absolutely you know mm -hmm. at Ingrid mm -hmm. Ingrid mm -hmm. and you yeah how are you gonna look together right. as a right. couple right. yeah you yeah. know right. that's the difference right you know, I was in Illinois doing a search for kids because again a director who wants normal kids Kids. I was like, oh gosh. And I used Stand on Deliver Sides for the high school kids to read. Because I figured, well, you know, they'll be able to relate, right? And so, again, they freeze. So I then have to figure out what to do. Can I play with them? Can I do improv with them? And again, one will come out and, you know, it'll be, oh my gosh, this guy just, ha he gets it. I don't know why he gets it, but he gets it. So it's very rare. But, but again, it, it, it just takes time. Yeah. And when you see the real kids. And see, budget. At, yes, and Ramon, time, saw, and budget. Ramon right. saw the kids in high school. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. But see, uh, along the lines to you know, uh, what you're saying, uh, that it takes time, I was uh, uh, very lucky because uh, if I had read like earlier on, I would not have understood what I was doing. Right. But I had been watching these guys right. mm. yeah. for weeks yeah. now. Oh and editing their takes. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I see what he's doing. Oh, I see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of, like, an under, as Eddie mm -hmm. called it, understanding, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of these high school kids, like you say, they've never yeah. seen anything, right, right. you know. Yeah. Yeah. But if you put them in that situation and you show mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. you know, Their they, brother they could they be in a gang, out. but they can't pretend to be right. their brother. Right. Right. right, exactly. I wanted to go around the table and ask, and, and you included, what was your best takeaway from the film or what inspired you in doing the film you know it's like we had grueling days as as mm -hmm. cast members you know we were there 16 17 hour days the turnaround was un mm -hmm. unbelievable we didn't have that 12 hour turnaround there was a lot of great things that came out of it mm -hmm. i wanted to find out what how mm -hmm. it impacted everybody here right. on, on a positive in doing the film, sure. not after, but right. in doing it. One thing you brought up, when you read the script, you knew it was going to be an important film, and I felt the same way. I knew that I was part of something that was separate from what I've been watching on television mm -hmm. and separate from the films that we were being exposed to. It was just such a, um, a wonderful thing to be a part of, considering the other product that was out there. So for me, uh, recently, this is really funny, I went over to, I was in Montebello buying a, a, a cell phone, and somebody, one of these kids that was selling it to me, recognized me. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how did you know this? I mean, I don't, I mean, you know, I mean, because he, he said, you were standing to deliver. 
But that was like 29 years ago. <laughs> so uh, tell me something. He goes, listen, everybody that lives in Montebello, Pico Rivera, East LA, and even Whittier has seen the film. Like they show it on, at school. More than once. Like yeah. Many times. Yeah. At least. Yeah. But I never knew that. And that really got me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. what was your what was your takeaway filming? Filming? Yes. In the process yes, of Yes, in the process. I, I think when I read it, you know, I felt like a very special story. And for me to have been part of that and so early on, I think it just set a standard, you know, of, of, of quality and story because we're all storytellers. But we all have to survive, too. And I've never, you know, even when I moved into, into casting, I've always been very story-driven. And that really helped to set a standard. Uh, you know, as to the quality and the types of stories that I wanted to help tell. You know, I've never s slid down or, or, or taken a job that I didn't feel that that I could either do a good job in or that it was a story that I felt, you know, that I didn't need to be a part of. But, um, you know, it, it's for me it set a standard, you mm -hmm. know, in story. And it was nice to have that so early on that I could just, you know, reflect back to that and go, yeah, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going, you know, higher. <laughs> That's good. And for you, what was your takeaway? Well, my, I mean, just being in the business was, because it was it was my first film. Um, I didn't know how to, how to uh, remember my lines. I remember once Ramon looked at me because I had written the lines and I taped them to somebody's <laughs> back. Oh, you did. <laughs> and he, he, goes, he goes, what are you doing? I was go, that you one couldn't of the Ghana kids? He was, whoever was in front of me, <laughs> yeah, I would tape it. And, I would tape it on the ground and everything, but, but my, my experience was that I had been accused of cheating on a test to go into college. I was going into yeah. the Culinary Institute of America, and I got accused of cheating, and I had to go back and take the test. So when I went to the audition, I remember Again. saying, I remember saying <laughs> that, like, you know, this is me. Like, I, I didn't totally recognize this, mm -hmm. you know? I just didn't know about the acting. And so um, I learned from everybody, like mm -hmm. everybody. I watched mm -hmm. everyone incredibly. I was not shy about watching what he was doing and watching mm -hmm. what Patrick was doing watching what you were doing and that helped me focus and it, and it also made me feel like mm -hmm. you said mm -hmm. there was a standard there mm -hmm. and I decided being a big guy and being like you know you always want to get they always want to typecast you mm -hmm. everybody here knows that and I fought against that as much as I could uh, because I thought it was just important I knew yeah. the film was a great film you know yeah um, I met you know family that process and and the people that I met and the whole journey of it helped me to, to kind of settle myself and go, wow, this is something that I really enjoy doing. What was your big, exciting moment doing the film? Because that also was your first right. film. Well, my, I mean, there, I could never say there's one big yeah. exciting moment because mm -hmm. every day was exciting. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, I've, I've never felt like getting up for something the way that I would for the movie. I would get up like really early. Yeah. And I'm not a morning person <laughs> <laughs> at all. That's right. <laughs> and I would drive from East LA to yeah. West Hollywood, you know, early yeah. on. And then when we were, we were in Silver Lake. Yeah. And, and I was just, I just couldn't believe mm. how, I, to this day I can't believe how lucky I am to mm. have mm. found these guys, mm. you know. Mm. Because as, as, as we were saying to each other earlier, I had been waiting for this mm -hmm. story, mm -hmm. you know. And when I saw it, I was like, "I'm going to be a part of it." Yeah, you know? yeah. And like, it anything. had to be so important, and for us to be part of it, mm -hmm. and it to become so historical, mm -hmm. is you know quite amazing. Yeah. I also love the fact that we are all still together. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and that's that we true. are. We're like siblings. Yes, we are. We're like siblings. Yes, we are. Like he's my crazy brother, yeah. and um, you know, <laughs> and he's you're, you're, and you're, and you're, you're, you're the loud, you're my loud and, sister. And, and, and Ingrid, <laughs> we can't forget Ingrid, yeah, Ingrid, and Ingrid, Ingrid, and that's Carla, right. and, and we're all still yes. bonded together. Yeah, and yeah. that's I, for yeah. me, that's like amazing. It's very rare. Yeah, it's cool. And it's,